I started blogging in 2003 before YouTube even existed. It is with heart wide open that I share with you my journey that has taken me from South Korea to now living off grid in the middle of nowhere. There's not many people in the resistance. <laughs> but it isn't futile. <laughs> She's roaming in the mud room. Oh, not just the mud room. But, you know, I haven't been able to take the egg out. And I was gonna call her a few days ago, but I couldn't get to do it. Because she was, she didn't look sick anymore. Even though the egg hasn't passed. And her butt never really prolapsed that much. So I don't know what's going on with her. But we're gonna wait a little bit before we bring her back with the other ones. She's pooing, she's eating. So I'm like, <laughs> what's going on with that egg? We'll see. be able to use the loft in the summer with mosquitoes oh, I almost fell so it needs to be mosquito proof so I framed the wall and all of that's gonna be mosquito net and uh, there'll be like a mosquito net magnetic door right there so it'll be easy to go in and out and but not for mosquitoes it'll be harder for mosquitoes what is in there there willow oh is it your food <laughs> you you <laughs> yes hi hi what are you doing so um i'm going to change the tire it's the time of the year to do that huh? when we came back from the big city there was a noise i was so stressed out just before we turned off on the dirt road and uh didn't sound too good but then it stopped a few kilometers later so I'm not sure, but maybe I'll find out what the, the problem was. Yeah, it's not hard to do, but <laughs> as always, living here isolated is if I start and I can't finish because there's a problem, then uh, <laughs> it's no good. When I do this, I'm going to tell you the story of when I saved a guy from committing suicide. <laughs> I saved him good too. Somebody gave me this. But I think that's fucking bullshit. He didn't do that. No one could do that by himself. He did that because a lot of people let him. Well, because a lot of people gain from that. Mm -hmm. So by these stickers, although they put like the blame on that one person, that's not the fucking problem. It's not that one person. I'm gonna make myself a, a tub. So I'm gonna get that going.
see I'm having some troubles getting uh, in. Okay, I'm gonna relax. Oh, the, the bottom is really hot, but as long as I'm uh, on the cushion and the sides are a little bit hot. Oh. Raven is licking his uh, bandage. I'm watching you, buddy. Oh. My butt was burning. Oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I would need something more than just a cushion. Or oh, I could just remove the fire. We'll see. I don't know if Divine's gonna wanna come. My love! Come on, Raven. You're not stuck. Do it! Oh, I'm getting so hot. It's almost time for me to get out. Uh, yeah. yeah, what was that? Come on! Raven! And then I've got Marley right there. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I have to come out. It's too hot. I guess, <laughs> I guess what gave me the idea to do, to do this today is watching Shogun <laughs> yeah, last night. They were in the, in the hot pools, natural hot pools. Maybe I put the wood back on there and then uh, Divine is done work in like 30 minutes. So it'll still be hot. Let me do that. Yeah, it's hot. 117. And uh, the probe is just in the middle. It's not touching the bottom. It's, it's good. That was... Uh, that, that happened in, in Korea, in Seoul. I had been uh, living in Slovakia for six months. And I just had come back to Korea. So that was... 2012 when I was in Slovakia I ran a lot I, I was running 20 kilometers a day just to try to keep my weight from uh, going nuts you know from getting super fat and uh, so when I came back to Seoul I kept on on running and uh, so that day I was running by the Han River and uh, that day I was out for my 20k and uh, I get to, uh, you know, there's a lot of bridges on that river but I'm, I'm about to go under a bridge and I see there's a crowd looking up on the other side of the bridge so as I run then I look up and then I see there's a guy on top of the bridge, it's not that high, it's like... Mm. It's not 20 meters, it's more like, it's closer to 10, you know, if it's not 15, it's not that high, like you can, people can dive like it's, it's not like jumping off like uh, the bridge in San Francisco or something, it's not that high, it's like fairly reasonable. But this guy is hanging on the other side of the rail, 
there's people uh, screaming, trying to like convince him not to jump. But everybody's watching, so I'm like, holy fuck, you know, he's gonna jump. So, uh, and he does. <laughs> holy fuck, he does. And uh, while well, I was right there, I was looking. But he jumps, but... I just picked up some gravel but the noise that we that what the hell is that <laughs> there's a noise back there and I don't know exactly what it is I don't think it's mechanical. I think it's something from the truck that rot. Because I don't hear it in the engine. What the fuck is making that noise? But he jumps, but he doesn't jump feet first. He's, he jumped, but he splashed his back, you know, like he had a, a flat on his back. So that must have hurt for sure. So what I did right away is I ran to the side of the, the river. There was a fisherman there. I gave him my phone. I took off my shoes <laughs> and I was ready to go in. But the guy came back up. He didn't, he didn't sink or anything. He was not unconscious but uh he was he was not doing too good and he was floating you know he was not drowning so i didn't feel the need to jump in and luckily because i really didn't fucking want to go in no way i was gonna go in because the hand river water is so dirty it's just like no you know i don't want to go <laughs> even if to save somebody but i saved him and i saved him even more because i didn't go in but i was ready you know i took my shoes my socks off and because it was like in may and it was a warm day I was wearing just like little shorts and a little like camisole for running. So, and you know, to, to go and drag somebody out of the water, it'll be a lot easier without my shoes, you know? So I'm like, you know, trying to encourage him to, uh, to come to shore because He's floating, you know, he's capable of floating, even though he <laughs> wish he had died already. He, uh, he was at the surface. And uh, meanwhile, while I'm trying to like encourage him in Korean, I, you know, I look around me and there's a young boy there and I'm like, you know, I'm I'm giving him a sign like I need a, a rope or a stick, something to kind of because the guy is like, you know, maybe from here to Willow's Bowl there. He's really not far like this. And it takes me two seconds. So my plan is like, if he goes under, I'm going in, you know, I'm going to grab him. Like I had time. I just dive in. Boop, I, I grab him. It's not too hard. Anyway, maybe, but. It would have been, but I was confident I had it under control. So, um, the kid takes off and uh, then he comes back. He comes back with a boy that, you know, along the river, there's so many people in Seoul committing suicide doing this, uh, jumping off bridge, that they actually have boat patrols and like 
safety and equipment on the on the on the side of the river. So that I got a new car. <laughs> oh shit. It's a Ford. I'm not sure what kind of Ford, but I don't care. I can go home. So this is uh one of the challenges of living off grid is uh, in the middle of nowhere is uh, if your car fucks up it's a lot more challenging to uh, get back to uh, you know, to get home like if I had not been able to rent this car I would not be like I would have had to pay somebody to come pick me up and drive me home and same thing when the truck would be repaired so what's wrong with the truck is the rear differential as I suspected when I first got out this morning I was like who's that car <laughs> I had almost forgotten about uh, the adventures of yesterday so to recap it was uh, it's the rear differential the gears inside and the pin that uh, most likely ended up uh, breaking because of all the times I got stuck this winter uh, that's the mechanic asked me you know out of the blue uh, did you get stuck a lot <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no no <laughs> yes yeah so I am pretty sure that's what it did all that because uh, the circumstances and with the 4x4 not working and all that so yeah anyway it'll be fixed but it'll cost about two thousand dollars that uh, we could spend on something else anyway today is the day I'm gonna tackle this challenge I cannot uh, really find an excuse to not do it today, so I'm gonna do it. I turn around and I see the crowd standing there like there's tons of people nobody's fucking saying anything I'm the only one cheering the boy in the water fucking in Korean and none of the fucking Koreans is doing anything they're all like silent watching as it unfolds but they're not anyway that was beyond me anyway now with the boy, it's you don't want to just throw it because if you knock the guy out and he goes under, that doesn't help. So before that, like at one point, the eyes of that boy and my eyes, we connected. 
and he's like looking straight in my eyes and I'm looking straight at his and uh, we're talking, we're talking with our eyes. Like I understood him and he understood me. What I understood is like, please, please save me, please. <laughs> Come in the water, save me. <laughs> That's what he wanted. But hey, <laughs> he had, I wanted him to choose to stay alive. And actually, I didn't really want, it's not on purpose I wanted that. I just didn't want to go in the water. So I was like, you motherfucker, you're not going to make me go in the water just to save you when you can't save yourself. So save yourself. And he understood it. Huh? And he was, let me see, I, I don't know. But we understood each other. And then, uh, so I threw the, the, the boy and uh, he wouldn't fucking take it, the little fucker. Like he was, the boy was right by his face, but he was not making any effort to pick it up. He just fucking wanted to be, I don't know. I, so a little uncle next to me <laughs> took it out of my hand and true and i was like fuck be careful you know like you're not the one that's gonna go in the water if he goes down so <laughs> so the uncle it was close <laughs> he almost knocked him out but uh and the kid was still not taking it and it was like right minimum effort but then uh the man, I think he threw it again. And then the boy went kind of like on the belly of the kid. So everybody's watching. So he have like, he had no choice. He had to fucking grab it. And you know, that's what fucking saved his life is the fact that he had to make the decision to save himself because if I had gone and jumped in, it would have been fucking awesome for the news, you know, and <laughs> social media and all the bystanders. But that kid might have done it again, you know? He, he might, he, he, he would have been left without making the decision that he wanted to live. And that's what happened. When he grabbed the boy, he made that decision that no matter what was going on in his life, uh, he, was, he was living that day. He was not dying that day. And uh, so we pulled him in and, uh, you know, I was the only one, I think, there that had some uh, kind of training for that. So like the bank of the river was concrete. It was a little bit higher from the water. So we had to lift him up, but he was limp, you know, so I, uh, I, I, I grabbed him, like, you know, like we train at the swimming pool. And then um, he was uh, like, he probably had broken a rib or something because he was bleeding a little bit from his mouth from uh, hitting the water so hard. But uh, I, start, I put him on, uh, on his side and, you know, to recover. And uh, I was talking with him and, you know, I asked him, what's up? <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and uh, he was crying. <laughs> he was a university student, you know. It was, it was family day. And uh, he had a fight with his family. He felt they didn't like him or something like that. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but that was... Uh, that was a really cool experience in the sense that when our eyes talked and uh, me refusing to go save him, <laughs> that was so, but I think that's what saved him is that I left him to make the decision for himself. Yeah, I had his back though, <laughs> but I'm so happy I didn't go in the water. So uh, after that, like before the, oh no, yeah, the boat, 
the patrol boat for that sort of incident arrived a few minutes after we got him out and when these guys were there like I, I just went to get my stuff and I, I kept running you know uh, yeah so that's the story of when uh, I saved a guy from <laughs> committing suicide the tires are changed and I uh, fix that it had come off a little uh, now I'm gonna just drive around to uh, see if everything's okay <laughs> should I go now but I don't think I'm gonna need you my love I think I'll be okay let's see the last piece of wood I'm gonna go then. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, without you, I cannot do it. <laughs> okay, just hold it uh, just above the line. You see the line? There's one at each okay. rib. Hey, I didn't. I was forgetting to film. I was just carried away, but it's done. I'm. Uh... I'm proud and not so because I see like a lot of shit that's you know totally not good <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna learn from it instead of beating myself up so but I'm just gonna figure out how I'm gonna plug those holes uh, and then I'll do the flashing to cover the 2 by 6 Anyway, that's uh, coming to a close that uh, there's less steps left over there.